Anoma Umane Daber. What is there to say about our modern day Maccabees, the heroic soldiers of the IDF? who enable every Jew in the world to walk taller, who left their spouses and children and went off to battle, sacrificing their lives for the well-being of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. My friends, the saddest thing about the war in Gaza is that it makes every Jew realize that despite the passing of thousands of years, little has changed. The names are different, but the narrative remains the same. Remember the famous story in the book of Exodus of Moses, raised as a prince by the Pharaoh's daughter. One day he goes out and he watches Egyptians tormenting Jews personally witnessing one taskmaster terrorizing a Jew. Startled, he looks to the world for help, for someone with conscience to intervene, to the United Nations, to the State Department. He looks everywhere, but vayar ki ein ish. In the end, he discovers the truth that no one is going to fight the wars of a Jew. So he fights on alone and he pummels the taskmaster. The Torah's next three words are pregnant with meaning. Listen carefully. Ochein hadova. Noda Hadova, the incident involving Moses, behold, it became widely known. It goes viral. Everybody in the cafes in, in Cairo are talking about it. What an outrage. A Jew has the audacity to defend himself. The incident is then covered by the BBC, CNN, and the New York Times. <laughs> who, in, who instead of focusing on the story, the Pharaoh's long hatred and subjugation of the Jews, they concentrate their coverage on collateral damage caused by Moses, and they want to know how many blows he landed on the Egyptian. As a result, Moses the defender now becomes everybody's scapegoat who has to flee Egypt and fare for his life. 3,500 years later, a terrorist organization, Hamas, whose charter calls for Israel's destruction, fires hundreds of rockets into Israel's major population center. And you know what Israel does? It waits and waits, but no one acts. So Israel launches its incursion into Gaza. No sooner did the operation begin then world leaders drop everything to rush to Jerusalem with one objective in mind, to find a ceasefire, which begs the question, as my Rebbe would say in the yeshiva, for some common sense, why is it only an emergency when Israel finally defends itself and responds to the terrorists? Why wasn't it an emergency for every world leader to rush to Jerusalem five years ago with the objective of preventing Hamas from having 10,000 rockets? Why no urgency on convening a UN conference for tightening the borders and closing the tunnels 
to prevent terrorists from attacking Israel. It was no emergency. Why no alarm bells on putting pressure on Hamas's funders, Iran and Qatar? No, my friends. The alarm bell only goes off that there's an emergency when someone yells collateral damage. Let us be clear. There must be no moral equivalency between the State of Israel and Hamas. How many countries at war with terrorists make telephone calls and distribute leaflets warning all civilians to leave. My friends, one of the most pivotal moments in history was the invasion of Normandy, and thank God for Winston Churchill. But do you know, but do you know, my friends, that between 25,000 to 38,000 mainly French civilians, men, women, and children were killed in the first weeks of the invasion and the attempts to get to Normandy because wars are not perfect and not fought with precision. And do you also know, in all the wars that Israel has fought with Hamas lasting nine years, the total death toll of civilians up until today has been 2,200 for nine years. But the whole world is talking only about Israel's collateral damage. Of course, my friend, any innocent civilian casualty is a tragedy. But let's not distort history. Stop judging Israel by a different standard that we would judge the rest of the world. the poster child for collateral damage as if you never heard of it before. <laughs> this time, my friends, Israel deserves a real solution from world leaders, not a Band-Aid solution. And as for the people of Gaza, the solution for the people of Gaza is crystal clear. No more tunnels, no more rockets, and no more Hamas. I wish I could tell you tonight that all is well with the Jewish people. But it is not. It is not in Israel, it is not in Europe, and it is not in many parts of the world. The Jewish people face severe challenges on multiple fronts. In Israel, it has been seven weeks now, seven Shabbatot, 48 days of deep and soul-crushing trauma. It has been a summer of trauma. It began with three families in Israel waiting for their boys to come home from school for Shabbat in mid-June. The trauma deepened as we learned that Gilad, Naftali, and Eyal were brutally kidnapped. For 18 days, we as a community united as never before as we prayed, gathered, and rallied in LA and around the world, desperately hoping and praying and advocating for the safe return of Gilad, Naftali, and Eyal. Upon hearing the terrible news of the hideous killings, we once again united, mourning together and grieving together as one religious and secular, Sephardi and Ashkenazi, young and old, liberal and conservative, Jew and non-Jew. 
all of Israel and all of the Jewish people and all friends of Israel around the world have been in mourning these 30 days, these shloshim. None of us will ever forget where we were when we heard the terrible outcome. And I will never forget the heart-wrenching moment of delivering the worst imaginable news to Lehi. I would give anything for that outcome to have been different. Gilad, Naftali, and Eyal were not soldiers. They were teenagers, like many of our children. They were students of Torah. Their focus was to bring light to the world. O chadash al tzion ta'ir v'nizke kulanu b'mhera le'oro. In our tradition, God's light is recreated every day, and students of Torah help bring that light to the world. Gilad, Naftali, and Eyal brought their light to us on that fateful night, the light of the unity of the Jewish people. They bestowed upon us a legacy and a responsibility to keep what they stood for alive. Their families, by their exemplary and heroic demeanor, have been showing us the way. We have a responsibility to remain united, to strengthen our Jewish commitment and to support Israel politically, emotionally, and spiritually. We have a responsibility to bring the light to our people and to the world, each in our own way. And our unity is needed now more than ever before. Tonight, millions of Israelis are still in a line of fire as Hamas and other terror organizations continue to fire rockets massively and indiscriminately at Israel's major population centers from Elat to the Galilee and the Golan Heights from Shderot to Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and Haifa, and everywhere in between. Nearly 3,000 rockets since the kidnapping. This country wouldn't allow one. Tonight, tens of thousands are directly threatened by the deadly network of terror tunnels extending from Gaza into Israel and under our kibbutzim and moshavim. The intention was to attack numerous civilian communities simultaneously to kidnap and to murder as many civilians as possible. Tonight, hundreds of thousands more, including families here in Los Angeles, hope and pray for the safety of their young sons and daughters acting to defend Israel in the booby-trapped alleys of Gaza, facing terrorists deeply embedded in densely civilian areas, hiding behind women and children, firing from schools, mosques, homes, and yes, UN installations. The trauma and pain reached this community directly when we had to inform the Steinberg family of their son Max's passing. Max Zichononi Bacha, who had fallen in the line of duty in defense of his beloved adopted home in Israel, a place his parents had never before visited. Max paid the ultimate price to defend his people. Over 30,000 Israelis gathered at his funeral to embrace his family and the American Jewish community, declaring that in Israel there is no such thing as a lone soldier. Max may have been a lone soldier, but he was not alone. Those 30,000 people reflect the thousands upon thousands that comforted the three families that we're here to honor tonight. We have faced incredible trauma as a people and as individuals. While these dark and difficult days are indeed with us and ahead, as Jews we have never abandoned hope. We have always looked forward and we have always overcome darkness by celebrating Tu Bishvat, the festival of spring in the midst of winter, or lighting Hanukkah candles in the darkest days of the year. We have to defend ourselves when we're attacked, but we as a people will never stop praying and working for peace. 
and we will forever enshrine the memory and legacy of our three boys, our three sons, Gilad, Naftali, and Eyal, who bestowed upon us the light of Jewish unity. Thank you for standing up for Israel and for speaking out for Israel. We need you now as never before. In the words of our sages, Kol Yisrael arevim zelazeh, all of Israel are responsible for one another. We are one people standing shoulder to shoulder around the world, just as we stood together at Mount Sinai. All Jewish souls of all generations. In the words of a more popular modern Israeli song, Am echad velev echad, Am echad, Shechem echad, Keish echad, Shema Yisrael am echad. We are one people, one heart. We are one people standing shoulder to shoulder as one. Hear, O Israel, Shema Yisrael. We are one people forever united. Our daughter left for Europe. Where was she going to land first? In Paris. And sure enough, she was walking down the street one day when she got caught in a riot. Uh, and they were actually saying, kill the Jews. She heard that. The granddaughter of Holocaust survivors had to hear that in Europe. And then she went to the UK. Fortunately, she missed that riot. But what we're looking at is amazing. It's like the anti-Semites are coming out of the woodwork. And I'm not a paranoid person, but uh, you know, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for uh, people who dislike Jews to sort of find a good reason, and here's that reason now. Oh. God, Israel is actually defending itself against Hamas. So um, you're here tonight, and that is an excellent first step, but I'm going to give you homework. I'm very sorry. We have to do this. Imagine if every, there's over a thousand of you here tonight. Imagine if everybody went home and accepted my challenge of homework. And here's the homework. On the back of your program, there are things that you can do immediately that are not difficult. Six things that you can do to support the State of Israel right now. And we would be negligent if we let you have a, a very heartfelt evening tonight and that you would leave here and that you would not have homework. Because then tonight doesn't have a future. We have to give tonight a future. So first, I want to remind you that, in case you don't know, the United States gives $500 million a year to the PA, Palestinian Authority. And a percentage of that money goes to something called the Palestinian Prisoners Association. And they are giving terrorists in Israeli prisons money and the more heinous the crime, the more money they get. So I want you when you go home, it's true, I want you when you go home to go to the website no, notaxesforterror.com. Notaxesforterror.com. That's your first homework. Okay? The second thing is that Israel and everybody who cares about Israel right now is making the point of saying that we are not going to waste these lives that we have just lost on this effort if we do not make sure that the tunnels are destroyed and that, and that Hamas does not have this rocket capability and that Hamas is destroyed. Now, I know it's a lot to hope for, but that is the goal. Otherwise, what are we doing? So we need to call for demilitarization. It, it, it's something that President Obama and the State Department need to hear now. That 
is item homework number two. You have telephone numbers here on the page. It's going to be very easy for you to do it in the next two days. You have 48 hours to do this homework. Every homework has a deadline. Okay. Now, everybody in here can be a teacher. You all have your circle of friends. Each one of us has a circle of friends. And each one of you can, can learn more so you can teach more. That's your third homework assignment. And feel free to ask us for materials. We'll give it to you for free. Just take our materials, educate your friends. We have, go to hamascharter.com. Tell every single one of your friends that they can go to hamascharter.com and look at what is being said by Hamas. So it's very clear, there's no question. You learn more so you can teach more and we will be your partner. Item number four. We have an activism guide here tonight for you. And if there's no more left, if we're all out, ask us for it. Go to standwithus.com and ask us for this. We'll send it to you, we'll ship it to you at no cost. We'll ship you 25 or 250 at no cost. This will tell you how you use your phone and your fax machine and your computer easily so that you can be an activist for the state of Israel and the Jewish people. We want to help the Israeli soldiers. Uh, we have an Israel office, and because we're stationed in Israel, we have 16 offices around the world right now, and our Israel office is very busy. Uh, many of our, our staff have been requested to go to service, and, uh, and we pray for them. We want to see them all come home safe and sound. But meanwhile, our office is getting requests from troops, and uh, we have already begun fulfilling all that. We're del making deliveries every single day from cell phone chargers for their telephones so they can call home and say I'm okay uh, to even, you know, sandwiches and pizza and toiletries. We are doing that now. So I encourage you, if you want to make a specific donation earmarked for the soldiers, we will make that delivery and 100% of that money will go to the soldiers. We're here tonight for a shiva. What we really want to do is cry, because we feel like crying. We feel like shedding tears, tears of sadness. Tears of sadness for the three boys who were kidnapped and murdered. Tears of sadness for the 56 soldiers who gave their lives for Israel. Tears of sadness for all innocent people who don't deserve to die. These are not the tears we like. They're not the tears we want. We love those other tears, the tears of joy. We love the tears when we see a beautiful baby being born. We love the tears when we see a daughter, or a best friend, or a sister under the chuppah. We love those tears of joy when there's a young Jew reading in synagogue at a bar, bar mitzvah, reading the Torah. Those are the tears we love. Israel has given us so many of those tears of joy. All over the world, in 1948, on May 15th, there were tears of Jewish joy everywhere. When Israel was announced, was declared, there was dancing on the streets of Tel Aviv. 1900 years of waiting and yearning, and suffering and hoping and dreaming came together on that one day. One of the most intense moments of tears of joy that the Jews have ever experienced. It only lasted five minutes because they came after us. They didn't like it when we had all these tears of joy and they came after us. They came after us in 1948. They came after us in 1956, in 1967, in 1973. They've always been coming after us. We're not perfect. 
Israel never claims to be perfect. Israel has made its share of mistakes. But it sacrificed so much for the sake of peace. And after the greatest moment of sacrifice for the sake of peace, they came after us again. When their armies couldn't beat us, they came after us on the ground through suicide bombers. And we all asked ourselves, will we prevail? And we prevailed. And then they came after us with rockets over the air, over the fences. And we all asked ourselves, will we prevail? And again, we prevail through the miracle of the Iron Dome. And now they're coming after us under the ground through tunnels, tunnels of hatred, of destruction. And we all ask ourselves, will we prevail? And we all know the answer. We know we will prevail again. We will prevail because we love life so much. Don't ever think we're small people. We're huge people. We might be small in numbers, but we're tiny people with a very, very big idea. That's why we will prevail. Nobody could ever argue that the best thing that could ever happen in the Middle East is that if every country became like Israel. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. That's why we will prevail. Because of the quality of our ideas. We will prevail also because of you. The thought that tonight there are millions of Jews all around the world that are sitting Shiva with us as one big collective family sitting Shiva for those Jewish boys. When I go to Israel tomorrow, and by the way, I've had to cancel 25 meetings because I just decided yesterday. But when I go to Israel tomorrow, I won't be alone. I will bring all of you with me. I will bring every Jew with me. And this is why we will prevail. Because I never feel I'm alone. I've never felt so much love for Israel as I've felt the past few weeks. I gotta tell you. This is why I feel we will prevail. Because I feel all this love. We will prevail because we know, in the end, Jews know that when tears of sadness, we have the strength to turn them into tears of strength and tears of joy. And that's why we will prevail. Thank you. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM. To GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.